Hello, this is Miss Moore, and today we're going to discuss the formation of ions. So today's essential question, how are anions and cations formed? Make sure you answer the essential question in the summary. Okay, here we go. We're going to start by talking about noble gases. Noble gases are the group 18 elements, right? That's the helium, neon, argon, krypton, xenon, and rhenon. Um, noble gases are really, really stable. So they are not very reactive. Okay, not reactive. The reason they're so stable is they have what you call an octet, meaning eight valence electrons in the outermost, or electrons in the outermost energy level. Most of them, all but one, end in S2P6. Okay. So what's so special about the noble gases is that they have the maximum number of valence electrons for that energy level. If you remember, valence electrons can only come from the S and P sublevels. So the maximum number of electrons for energy levels 2 on is 8, S2P6. Helium doesn't have an octet. Um, he ends in 1S2 but he has the maximum number of valence electrons because energy level one only has an s orbital. Okay. So we have something called the octet rule. The octet rule. So first of all, it turns out that this octet, the s2p6, makes at these atoms really, really, really stable. They have no empty valence orbitals. And that's what every single atom wants. That's the goal of every atom. So here's the actual octet rule. In forming compounds, atoms tend to achieve the electron configuration of a noble gas. Okay. In fact, the reason any atom does what it does, whether it gains or loses electrons, hooks up with another atom, breaks up with an atom, whatever, the whole point, their whole goal, is to be like the noble gases. Okay, that's, that's the goal in every atom's life. All right, let's do a quick overview of ions. An ion is an atom that has gained or lost an electron. Okay, so if an atom loses or gains an electron, it has a charge. The definition of an atom is that it has no charge. So once it gains or loses an electron, it can no longer be called an atom. It has to be called an ion, which is an atom with a charge. Okay. So we have two types of ions. We have cations. Cations are positively charged. Okay. And a cation is formed when an atom loses an electron. Loses an electron leads to a positive because it used to have, the atom had the same number of positives and negatives, protons and neutrons, and sorry, protons and electrons. If it loses an electron, it now has an extra positive, an extra proton or two. So cations are positively charged, and that's when it loses an electron. Anions, on the other hand, are negatively charged. And you get a negative ion or an anion when an atom gains an electron because it now has an extra negative. Okay? All right, so now let's talk about the properties of, a, of an ion. Um, electrons determine most of an atom's chemistry. That's why as chemists, out of the three subatomic particles, protons, neutrons, and electrons, we love those electrons. They're our favorite because they determine almost all of an atom's chemistry. And chemistry is how atoms behave. So the behavior of an atom is based on its electrons. It's actually based on the number of electrons and the configuration or how they're arranged. And actually, it's not all the electrons that determine the behavior, but the valence electrons, okay, the guys in the outermost energy level. So those valence electrons are really important. So... Um, Remember that an atom is gaining or losing electrons. So if it gains or loses electrons, it, um, it's going to have a different configuration, right? Because it has a different number of electrons. And um, it turns out that an ion, 
its properties are more similar to the element with the same electro electron number than to the ion from which it, from, than from the atom that, from which it was formed. Okay, so for example, if sodium lost an electron, it would now have a configuration like neon, and sodium ion acts more like neon than it acts like sodium. Okay, and then a quick term. We have this term here, isoelectronic, or isoelectric. Isoelectronic means it's an atom and an ion with the same electron configuration. Okay, and we'll talk about that more in a few minutes. Okay, let's do a quick overview on how you would determine the formation of ions, and then we'll get into specifics. Okay, so elements form ions so they can be like the noble gases, the octet rule. Okay, that's the whole goal. Atoms do what they do so that they can be like the noble gases. That's their, that's their whole goal. So basically they want eight valence electrons or full valence electrons, which would be S2P6, or they could be like helium, which is 1S2. However, atoms are lazy, so they will take the shortest route to become like a noble gas. Right? And we'll talk more about that in a minute. All right, let's, let's review ionization energy, which hopefully you remember is um, how tightly an atom is holding its electrons, right? Holding his electrons. Okay, so let's review the trend going across and down. So going down, ionization energy decreases, right? They're not holding their electrons as tightly because we've got a weaker nucleus. And going across, it increases because we have a stronger nucleus. Okay. And now a little bit more review. We've got um, the metals. If you remember, the metals are everything on this side of the jaggedy line. And the non-metals are on that side. Okay. So, going across, the the ionization energy increases, right? Which means it's, they're holding the atoms tighter and tighter, or the electrons tighter and tighter, which means they're less likely to lose electrons, right? So the metals, in general, have weaker nuclei, which means metals are more likely to form cations, or positives. They're more likely to lose electrons where non-metals are less likely to lose their, their electrons, okay? They're actually more likely to gain. Because if you remember, the, the trend in electronegativity which is the ability to steal electrons is the same as the trend in ionization energy. So going to the right or towards the metals, the non-metals, sorry, the nucleus is getting stronger and stronger and stronger. They're more able to steal electrons, right? Which means they're more likely to become anions. So non-metals are more likely, it's kind of hard to read, huh? Anions down here. Non-metals are more likely to become anions metals more likely to become cations or positive because metals lose electrons easy non-metals being that they're towards the right on the periodic table are more, are more able to gain electrons or steal electrons all right let's talk specifics now how do we form cations okay you need some energy to remove an electron creating a cation and a cation, again, is a positive. So because metals have relatively low ionization energies compared to the non-metals, they lose electrons fairly easy, easily. 
So this is why metals become cations. Metals, cations. If you can remember that, that's going to really help out. So the guys to the left of the jaggedy line become cations. All right, so how do we figure it out? First of all, remember, what's the goal? What's the goal of every atom? To be like a noble gas, right? That makes them happy. So your goal is to help all atoms to the best of your ability to become like noble gas to make them happy. Okay, so how do we do this? It's actually pretty easy to determine the number of electrons a metal atom will need to lose to become a cation with a noble gas configuration by looking at the electron configuration. Look at sodium. Sodium is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s1. Remember, noble gas configuration is s2, p6. So what's the easiest way to make sodium look like a noble gas? We got rid of 3s1, he now is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. That's the nearest noble gas configuration. By the way, that is the configuration for neon. Okay. So how many electrons did sodium need to lose to achieve that configuration? He needed to lose one electron, right? This guy here. But if he loses an electron, he has extra protons, right? He used to have 11 protons and 11 electrons. If he loses one electron, he only has 10 electrons, but 11 protons, so he has an extra negative. So we are no longer gonna call him sodium. We're now gonna call him sodium ion, which we write is Na1+. And he, he now he has 11 electrons, so he is isoelectronic or isoelectric with neon meaning he has the same electron configuration as neon. Okay, so that's how this specific metal, sodium, becomes like a noble gas. We look at his electron configuration, we figure out the easiest way to make him like a noble gas. That's by losing one electron, giving him the noble gas configuration 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. He is now Na1+. Okay, how about anions? Very similar. So electronegativity is the ability to create a negative ion. Um, it's the ability to steal electrons. And nonmetals have relatively high electronegativities. So they become anions. Okay, they become anions because they are fairly able to steal electrons. All right. Again, it's pretty simple to determine the number of electrons a nonmetal Adam will need to gain to become an, oh, that's not correct, to become an anion, not a cation, an anion with a noble gas configuration by looking at the, by looking at the electron configuration. So if we take, for example, the atom sulfur, his electron configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p4. Now, keeping in mind that they want to be late, that atoms are lazy, there are two ways he could become like a noble gas, right? The first way would be if we got rid of these six electrons, right? Now he's going to have a noble gas like neon. The other way would be to add two more electrons giving him 3s2, 3p6. Well, it's a lot easier to add two than to get rid of six, right, if you think about having to move them. Um, also keeping in mind that nonmetals always add electrons either way. So his nearest noble gas configuration is going to be like argon. Okay, That's the easiest way for him to become like a noble gas. So in this case, being that sulfur is a nonmetal and because it's easier, he's going to gain electrons. He has to gain two, right? He, had, he was 3p4. We added two to give him 3p6. So since he gains two electrons, he is now going to be symbolized as S2- because he used to have 
16 protons and 16 electrons. We gain two more electrons, giving him 18 electrons. So he has two extra electrons, two extra negative charges. So he is now going to be sulfur S minus 2 minus, meaning he has a 2 minus charge. He is isoelectronic, meaning having the same electron configuration as argon. Okay? So that's how you figure out the, how an atom would become like a noble gas, using becoming an ion, either a cation or an anion. Okay, practice time. At this time, try to hit, or hit pause and try to figure out one at a time um, if you can figure out how each of these atoms will become like an ion. If you're not sure, maybe watch the first one, then hit pause for number two and number three. Try your best. All right, so we'll start with magnesium. Magnesium has 12 electrons, and he's a metal, right? So he's 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, right? So um, he's a metal, so he's going to be losing electrons to be like a noble gas. So it looks to me like if we got rid of those two, he would now have noble gas configuration. So he's now going to be Mg. We messed with two electrons. We lost two electrons, which means we have an excess of protons or an Mg2+. Plus. Okay, hit pause again. Try nitrogen. Nitrogen has seven electrons, giving him the configuration 1s2, 2s2, 2p3. Okay. There's two ways to tell he could gain electrons. One is that he's a nonmetal. Nonmetals gain electrons to become anions. You could also look at the fact that he would have to lose five electrons to be like a noble gas. That would make him like helium. It's actually easier to have him add three electrons. Okay, so he would now be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6 with a, no, with, so he would now be isoelectronic with neon. Okay, so we messed with three electrons. So he's gonna be Ne. We added three electrons which means he has three extra negative charges. So he is going to be N3 minus. Okay. Last one is beryllium. Beryllium is 1s2, 2s2. So to make him like a noble gas, we could either add 2p6 to make him like neon, so we could add six electrons, or we could get rid of two electrons, which is a lot less work. Um, also, because he is a metal, we know that we're going to be getting rid of electrons to make a cation. All right, so he is. this is a noble gas configuration, right? 1s2 is like helium. So, Be, we messed with two electrons. We got rid of them. So he now has excess protons. So he is Be2+. Plus. Okay. If you don't feel good about this, I suggest you rewind, rewatch, try again. Otherwise, that's it. Have a good one.